Hello everybody, this is Hammer Striker here. Today I've got the largest of the snake guns from Colt, the Anaconda. Please don't forget to check out our website. Go to our affiliates page. You'll find discount codes for things like Mantis Sacks and Core Belts. You'll find a link that you can sign up for Big Daddy Unlimited. They actually have things in stock and usually at a lower price than other places. Link to that cool little bore light that we use for lighting up the barrels. Use those links, it will often save you money never will cost you any additional money and helps the channel. Thank you. This is the 2021 version of it, which is the re-release of the Snake series that they've been kind of working on. And it's got monstrous chambers because it chambers a monstrous round, the 44 Magnum. Of course, you can also use 44 Special in it. This is the 8-inch version. It's also available in the 6-inch version. But of course, if you're going to get the biggest snake in the world you want to get the biggest snake so I got the 8 inch version the 6 inch version would probably come to about here it's a heavy gun this particular one it weighs 3 pounds 11 ounces so 59.1 ounces if you want to get down to ounces and just to put it in perspective it's only 11 ounces lighter than a desert eagle so it is a big heavy gun and despite that it still recoils fairly stout but it's very controllable and it's very comfortable to shoot. It's pleasant to shoot. There is one drawback. All of the snake guns have the exposed back strap. Even on the Python, which has a wooden grip, this back strap is exposed. And you know, on something this powerful, it will kind of pump into your hand a little bit. So you may or may not choose to wear gloves with it. It all depends on your tolerance for, for hit and getting hit by it. And you do definitely want to get a good grip on it. From a size perspective, of course, this isn't designed for concealed carry. This is a range gun, a collector gun. Uh, you could use it for home defense and, of course, hunting. It's 15 inches long front to back from the furthest point here at the back all the way out here to the end of the barrel. So it's not, no stretch of the imagination a small or compact gun, not even intended to be. Of course, it's thick because a 44 Magnum cylinder, the cylinder walls have to be thicker, and of course, the rounds themselves are bigger. While I've got it turned in this position, I'm going to show you two things. One, notice the matte finish on the top. So it's kind of an anti-glare finish. So you're not going to get reflections or glare off the top of the gun. It does have a, an adjustable rear sight that happens to be a blackout. And I'm really not a fan of blackout sights, but this one has a sufficient gap between the front and the rear and the rear or the front sight is visible enough. It's this fluorescent orange. It doesn't glow or anything, it's just a fluorescent orange ramp that I was actually able to see it quite well. And the fact that there's a little bit of black at the top and a little bit of black at the bottom makes it where it doesn't kind of blend in with the target. And it was fairly easy to get on target. This was actually very easy to shoot well. The trigger on this is quite a nice trigger. Now I am going to protect the firing pin by loading it with snap caps. These are just inert dummy rounds. So I'm going to pop a few of those in there just to protect the firing pin. It's an expensive toy and I really don't want to damage it. So we'll start with we'll start with double action. The double action comes in right around 10 pounds but it's very very smooth, no stacking and it's reasonably short. So I'm going to go back of course, there's all the way out. Almost no take up. As soon as you touch it, you're basically on the beginning of what would be the wall. And as you come back, it's a nice, very consistent, smooth, very, very smooth stroke. Now, in single action mode, it comes in around six pounds, but it doesn't even feel like that. And the reason for that is that's the entire break, that short little stroke. So it may actually be lighter than six pounds and it's difficult to get off the scale quick enough to register it because it really doesn't feel at all like six pounds. I can feel I'm putting some pressure on it. I'm stacking up some pressure with my finger as I'm slowly trying to gauge how hard it is to pull. But look how short that is. So on a gun like this where the trigger is going to be an important characteristic, yeah, the trigger is exactly what you would want, what you would expect. The feel of it is smooth, crisp, and when you're, especially when you're in single action mode, exceptionally short. One thing I kind of overlooked while I had it turned to show you, the two screws, it's drilled and tapped to be able to put scope mounts, a Picatinny rail, or something like that on it if you wanted to. This is the type of gun that would be used for hunting. The round is powerful enough to use for that. 
I don't plan to use it for that, so I'm probably not going to put a scope on it or any kind of optic. But you're set up if you choose to. It's got a full underlug all the way back, which adds to that massive looking profile. It's a stainless steel, and it's kind of, it's not mirror polished, but it's highly polished. So it's got a really nice shine to it, kind of a matte peen, like a shot peen kind of finish underneath that which gives it kind of a nice texture. It's a really nice looking gun. Now, keep in mind that it isn't designed to be a mirror finish. So it's meant to be this kind of satiny kind of finish. And here you have its little brother. So kind of just kind of give you a little bit of perspective. This is the Python. And you can see how much more massive the Anaconda is. That Python is still quite a nice gun. So I've been waiting for this for a while. When the Python came out, actually when they first started with the Cobra and reintroduced the whole Snake Gun series, one of the things I kind of thought is, if the Python ever comes out, I'm going to get one. And if the Anaconda comes out, I'm definitely going to get one. And here they are. Right now, they're very, very hard to find. They have an MSRP of $14.99, which is a little bit steep, but not obscene for what this is. But unfortunately, right now, you aren't going to get one under $2,000. And yes, I know, you can go to a lot of the gun retailer sites and you'll see them listed for $14.99, $14.69. I, the lowest I saw is $14.39. But the words out of stack always appear in that listing. I have not seen one come in stock available to purchase at those prices. I don't know if uh, they're shipping them off to gun broker or what's going on with it. But you're going to have a hard time getting one of these at a reasonable price. So you're just going to keep it looking and waiting or just wait it out like you had to do with the previous snake guns and wait for things to settle back down. But even the Python hasn't really truly settled back down and I think it's because of the supply shortages going on right now. So if you want one of these and you're definitely deciding you're going to have one of these, unfortunately right now you're probably going to pay for one of these. And that's the unfortunate reality we're in right now. So let me talk about a few of the other things that makes this gun uniquely a cold. The trigger has got a little bit of serration on it, a little bit of texture. So you're not going to slide off it. And that's especially when you're doing the double action mode. That's quite helpful. The cylinder on these rotate clockwise. And the different manufacturers kind of make a deal out of which way their cylinders go. And it's consistent throughout their, usually throughout their entire manufacturing line. The hammer spur is flattened and serrated. So it's really easy to get a hold of and it's really comfortable to get a hold of. And despite the size of this gun, it's very easy to thumb it with your your main hand, your primary hand, and release it. Other guns, they're shaped in such a way or they stick up in such a way that you can't really easily get them with your regular hand. So you end up having to come over with your support hand to thumb them back. So they've thought of a lot of details. Of course, it's got the Colt logo on it. Let's see if I can get it where the studio lights don't glare off it. There it goes. And releasing, you pull back. Smith & Wesson and some of the others you push forward or you push down. This you pull this little bell shape back and from that point you can then eject the rounds. And I'm going to eject these snap caps because I don't need them anymore. A few things I found shooting at this at the range. Number one, it ejected very smoothly every time. Didn't have any sticking or any other issues with ejection. The cylinder operated in smooth, very smoothly, turned like it should. And thumbing the hammer back and everything was just nice and smooth. And even the action of thumbing the hammer back is consistent, smooth, with no stacking or interruption or anything else. It's just, it operates very, very nicely. I'll show you the other side. The other side has less going on. It does, unfortunately, have this little uh, barcode on the, bat, on the bottom of it. And then you've got the Colt logo. It's also got a vent rib barrel. I failed to mention that earlier when I was talking about the underlug. So it's got a lot of the features that you would look for in a high-end revolver. Some cosmetic, some actually truly functional. This does get warm when you're operating it, so the vent rib barrel will help keep it a little bit cooler. But I did notice when I was shooting it, and because it's so easy to shoot well and so easy to control, you kind of get going a little quick with it. It's fairly easy to warm this thing up, especially with 44 Magnums. What we were shooting at the range was 44 Magnum hunting loads. On the muzzle end, it does have a target crown. It's kind of hard to see it on camera, but if I tilt it a little bit, you can see it. 
and the front side is replaceable. You back this little screw out and you can replace the front side. I'm probably not going to. I like this sight. The rear sight, you'd have to pull a pin out. There's a pin right here. You'd have to push a pin out and get a very specific sight that would fit this. But I was able to shoot this well and having the adjustable feature, I'm going to leave the sights alone. So you can change the sights if you choose, but I don't intend to do anything like that. Show you the barrel. I'll light up the barrel like I usually do. Conventional rifling, well machined, nice and clean. I didn't find any machining defects in this. Kind of an imposing looking uh, view if you're looking at the front end of this. Not exactly the view that you want to see of something this massive. And I did notice that when I was cleaning it, there's some dirt that got stuck in the crown that I didn't get completely get out. That's not machining defect. Overall, it's a very beautiful revolver. It's a very well-functioning, smooth revolver, and unfortunately at this point in time, a very expensive revolver. One other note, it is a safe revolver. It uses a transfer bar safety. So the trigger actually has to be pulled to keep that transfer bar up, otherwise it moves down out of the way. So it is safe to carry it hammer down on a loaded chamber because the hammer cannot reach the firing pin without that transfer bar being there. So if you're looking for a really nice target revolver, you can pull nice tight groups with this. I had no problem pulling tight groups with this. You're looking for a nice hunting gun or a collector gun and you're willing to part with some of your cash. This is definitely a good choice. So you, I plan to have the entire Snake series. So this kind of rounds that out. Beyond that, if you like our videos, please give us a thumbs up, share, subscribe, click that bell to be notified if you do. Check us out on Facebook, Patreon, Instagram, Twitter, and everywhere. And thank you.